Let me say this though. I, so I don't, I, I don't watch television to be honest. I mean, not like, not that I don't watch television, but I mean, like, yeah, yeah. I don't, I don't know about daytime TV, right? Like, yeah, yeah. I know we got Judge Mathis, you know, we we, we had Judge Joe Brown, right. you know, we have we have a, three black male judges actually. Yeah, watch this, you just said three. Yeah, because it's Amer- the American Court. How many you got? How many female programs you got? So here's the thing, though. This is what this is what I will say. Okay. This is what I'm say, Uncle Stu. Go for I it. don't like that black men compare themselves to black women because or or to any woman because I think that men sh- should compare themselves to other men. Mm-hmm. And I will say this about men: I disagree with the how they derive because I don't think that men lost their voice. I, I don't I don't agree with that because the feminist movement, they gave those women those power and it was white women. And to be honest, like black women did not identify or even if they did identify with the white feminist movement, they were often left out of the conversation and the negotiation. Once the white women got what they wanted from the negotiation, the power, whatever, they really didn't care about our needs and what we wanted. So black women who were in the feminist fight, they had to separate and like have another, a totally different like the call it the black feminist movement, like in order to make sure that the concerns was centered around black women and their experience and what they wanted. Sure, we benefit from feminist, feminine, like the feminist movement, all women, right? If we're working, you know, if you have competitive salary, your education, all those things, access, right? We we were able to obtain those things as a result of the feminist movement. Don't get me wrong, mm-hmm. but it was literally not, I mean, yes, it was part of, you know, separation from men. So mm-hmm. to say, but it didn't stop men from still obtaining and doing whatever they needed to do in order to excel in society. It never prevented you. But black women, black women also went through 90s music, being called bitches hoes, being called degrading names, over sexualized, exploited. So there was things happening on both ends. Mm-hmm. Especially black women, if you look back. They were labeled the welfare queen, even though government assistance was targeted at different demographic of people. Black women became the face of it, even though we weren't even the majority of people benefiting from it. And somehow we're still the face of it. So we're also looked at like they just live off the government. They they don't have, you know, they they got all these baby daddies. They ain't got nobody taking care of them. A lot of people actually stereotype black women the same that they do black men. Nobody is preventing either one of us from fighting these stereotypes and doing what we need to do. Like nobody's preventing either one of us. Let me ask you a question. You said you study feminism, right? Um, well, black, black history, but yeah, feminist movement was part of it. I didn't study it, but. Have you read any Bell Hooks books? Of course. Okay. So, you know, for a fact, uh, may she rest in peace, but you know, because I got three of her books right here. Told you I studied feminism. So now, you know that in the 70s, yes, I agree. But do you realize that Bell Hooks did not spin it that way? Are you aware that Bell Hooks spent it where the alphabet community is what we are now dealing with? So what you're what you're not understanding um, from a political standpoint, it's called the over-policing of African-American men. You can right now leave this panel and you can walk into a police station and you can accuse your husband of violation and he's at work and he will go to jail and the accusation will destroy his life. And guess what? Even if you're found lying, nothing will happen to you. If me and Shannon Ross did that, we going to jail. Okay. okay but it. that's not just that's not just black women. That's every woman. Hold it. You know Hold that, right? The, the, the whole idea is that an African-American woman or anyone can accuse a man of anything and he can lose his career and his life and even go to jail without her ever being prosecuted for the lie. A man cannot do that to another man. The next thing that you have to realize is who controls the family court system? Most African-American men. Now, I am fortunate. I was able to to get my daughter, meaning I was able to go into court and and get full custody of my youngest daughter. But I also had to go through hoops and loops and had a little pocket change 
in order to do that. And so a lot of men are not in my position that was able to be able to do that. A lot of the family court system is not controlled by men and is controlled by women. When you say um, African-American men gave up power, uh, first of all, you have to recognize what is power. It is economic power. That's one. It is political power. Two, it is social power. There is never a historical time where African-American men are at the top of the Fortune 500 companies. Therefore, they don't control economic power in America, nor do their numbers equal what will be known as political power in America. So they don't control the political policies that is written. So they didn't have power there. I think it is subconscious that is being taught that African-American men is is got all this power, all this control and that they control women. No, it is not that way. This is why um, a lot of the conversations, if you listen to the to the what I call black manosphere intellectuals, then you will understand, uh, say, go. I would I would ask you to do this and we can always bring this conversation back. I would actually do some research and listen to Dr. Tia Son Johnson, who is a big YouTuber. Um, yeah, I've heard him before. Let me let me say this. I will not support the black man of spirit men. I don't care if you call them intellectuals. I will not support them. Let me tell you why. I, I, I don't I don't support them. Uh, right, right, right. And, I, and I and I think everybody has to choose what at what, what lanes they want to be in and which ones they don't. And right. I and I I, so, I have a thousand YouTube channels that I watch and people who I've hit the notification bell and subscribe to. Right. Um, I've definitely heard him <laughs> before. Trust me. Um, let me say this. Men, men don't go to jail for lying. Okay. Nobody goes to jail for lying because the thing is lying is something that they have been unable to get control of just like any system. When you give it, when you, when you give something away, Right. Anything. When you give something away, power. When did, power. We, when did black men? My only question is, can I, did, I just want to finish this one statement, okay. though. When we, give, when we give power away. Right. Mm -hmm. In any circumstance, there's always going to be some people who, who abuse it. Mm -hmm. But what I don't like to say is that women are falsely reporting issues to because that's not true. Right. Like the perception is that, oh, there's all these women that are falsely reporting. No, there's actually mil like many real cases that are really happening. So we want to highlight the cases where the women are falsely reporting and we want to put grave attention to that. But we don't focus on the men who are actually killing like I'm sorry, deleting women or who are actually abusing women who are actually participating in this this behavior. We, we tend to focus on those cases. It's, it's for instance, even on the flip, um, a black woman is deleted. It's fine. She's deleted by black men. Oh, we, 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 we pass on by that. But the moment she's deleted by another race of men, we are like, Glamour, oh, this happens. Look, look what happened when y'all do all this. But it doesn't happen as often as it happens within our own community, but we still will highlight it on the flip side. We do the same thing with these things. You're saying, yeah, there are people who take advantage, who lie, who cheat the system, who falsely report stuff, who do these things, but there's many people who don't. There's actually more people who don't than, than do. And yeah. now there's things in place to prevent this from happening. For instance, you have to have proof of said abuse. I work in DV. So you can't just call. I can't just call and be like, my husband just punched me in my face. Okay. When they get here, they want to see said evidence, right? So if my husband says, no, I did not do that. Trust me. There is things that have to take place. There, there are now procedure. So we talking about something that's no longer a factor. And what happens is it prevents men from reporting when they are being abused. When we keep on talking about things that used to go on, because now men can report abuse. Men can pen like actually women who, who have participated in this can be penalized. And I think you guys need to be telling men that they should be reporting this versus telling men that if you report it, then they ain't going to believe you. That's not true. And yeah, it's, I, it's not accurate. I'm going to tell you it is. I am the victim of domestic violence. And I've spoken about it right here on this platform. I know you have. But when, but when did that happen? 
Uncle Stu. Over 10 years ago. So now That's let what me I'm trying to tell you. Yeah. I also have I also have connection to two police officers and hey you're about to make me call Nathan Daly and tell him to show up on this platform. Oh, and um, I love Nathan Daly. I actually yeah. watch his show. I watch yeah. his show he, and he knows I'm a supporter. Wait, we would be glad to bring that conversation back to the table. I'll be glad to have that. I would love to have that conversation because look, I, uh, uh, all these women control this and that. That's not true. Men are dominant. They have power, especially men of no color, because I don't want to keep saying that name, especially men of no color. They have the power in these situations. They make the rules. They give the they give us the resources. And I never said black men have power. What I said was ain't nobody stopping you from doing what you need to do. We, we need to obtain social power. We need to bring resources and wealth in our communities. And there's nothing stopping Black men from doing that but them. That's what I said. And that's what I mean when I I know you saying like, oh, there's all these other big bad men stopping. No, to me, that, that's that's a, it's just, it's a fallacy. It's what we've been taught that somebody's going to stop us from doing something. It, it's, we've, been, we've been taught our whole lives that somebody is holding us back and there's this big bad man that's going to stop you from being great. We we even bring up Black Wall Street that happened in the 1930s to scare us off in the 2022. We we do it. We do it. 